Let's get started. Start with listening and then learn new words and practice them in sentences. Have you ever wondered why small talk is so important in our daily interactions? It's more than just chatter about the weather or the latest movie. It's the first step in building relationships, both in our personal lives and in the professional world. When we engage in small talk, we're laying the groundwork for deeper connections. In the business world, small talk can be the key to networking, forming partnerships, or even landing a job. On a personal level, it's how we initiate friendships, get to know our neighbors, and build a sense of community. More than that, it's our chance to make a positive first impression. When we show interest in others and engage in pleasant conversation, we're presenting ourselves as likable, friendly, and approachable. And these are the qualities that people remember. So don't dismiss small talk as just idle chatter. Remember, small talk is not trivial. It's a powerful tool that opens doors to meaningful relationships. Now, what are some safe and engaging topics for small talk? Well, one of the most universal topics is the weather. It's something we all experience and can share thoughts on. Then we have current events. Sharing opinions on recent happenings can spark engaging dialogues. But remember to tread lightly to avoid heated debates. Hobbies make another great topic. They offer a glimpse into what we enjoy and are typically happy to chat about. Travel is another popular subject. Whether it's a trip to a local landmark or an exotic vacation, people love to share their travel experiences. Lastly, food is a topic that usually whets the appetite for conversation. From favorite dishes to unique dining experiences, food talk can be as diverse as the cuisines themselves. Remember, the key is to find common ground. It's about sharing and connecting over shared experiences or interests. With these topics in mind, you're ready to jumpstart any conversation. Initiating a conversation might seem daunting, but with the right techniques, it becomes a breeze. Firstly, let's tackle how to kickstart a conversation. Your opening line doesn't have to be a grand spectacle. It can be as simple as, hi, I'm how is that? This not only initiates a conversation, but also shows that you're interested in their life. Now you've started the conversation, so how do you keep it going? The key is to ask open-ended questions. These are questions that can't be answered with just a yes or no. They require a more detailed response, sparking a deeper conversation. For example, instead of asking, do you like your job? You could ask, what do you enjoy most about your job? Showing genuine interest is another crucial aspect of maintaining a conversation. This means actively listening to what the other person is saying and responding in a manner that shows you're engaged. A simple, that sounds fascinating, tell me more, can go a long way to show your interest. Sharing relatable experiences is another great way to keep the conversation flowing. If someone is talking about their recent hiking trip, you could share your own experience of hiking or an outdoor activity you enjoy. This not only keeps the conversation going, but also helps build a connection with the person you're talking to. Remember, the goal is not just to talk, but to converse. It's a two-way street. So while you share your experiences and ask questions, ensure you give the other person a chance to speak and express their thoughts as well. In the end, it's all about balance. Balance between listening and speaking, asking questions and sharing experiences, showing interest and being interesting. It's like a dance where both partners move in harmony, creating a beautiful experience. Keep these tips in mind and you'll have no problem keeping the conversation flowing. Listening is just as important as talking, if not more so. Active listening is a cornerstone of effective communication. It's not just about hearing what the other person is saying, but genuinely understanding their message. By practicing active listening, we show respect, interest, and empathy towards the person we're conversing with. In small talk, active listening involves using nonverbal cues such as nodding, maintaining eye contact, and leaning in slightly. These cues show the speaker that you're engaged in the conversation. But remember, it's not enough to just look interested, you also need to respond appropriately. This could mean summarizing what the speaker has said, asking follow-up questions, or sharing a related experience. For instance, if someone tells you about their recent trip to Italy, you could say, Dodo, that sounds amazing. What was your favorite city? This shows that you're not only listening, but also interested in hearing more. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, those dreaded awkward silences. We've all been there, haven't we? The conversation suddenly hits a dead end, and all you can hear is the ticking of the clock. But don't panic. There are ways to navigate these pauses gracefully. One strategy is to change the subject smoothly. If the current topic has run its course, 
You could say something like, speaking of Italy, have you ever tried making homemade pasta? This not only shifts the conversation to a new topic, but also keeps it relevant and engaging. Another approach is to comment on the surroundings. For example, if you're at a networking event, you could say, this venue is really something, isn't it? This gives the other person an opportunity to share their thoughts, and before you know it, the conversation is back on track. Keep in mind that not all silences are awkward. Sometimes a pause is just a natural part of the conversation, giving both parties a moment to gather their thoughts, so don't feel pressured to fill every silence. Remember, active listening and handling pauses gracefully are key to mastering small talk. By applying these strategies, you'll not only become a better conversationalist, but also make the people you're talking to feel valued and heard. A knowing how to transition between topics and exit a conversation gracefully is an art. To transition naturally, the key is to find a link between the current topic and the next. For example, if you're discussing vacation plans and want to shift to food, you might say, speaking of that trip to Italy, have you ever tried authentic Italian cuisine? When it's time to exit a conversation, tact and sincerity are crucial. A graceful exit leaves a positive impression, so avoid abrupt endings. You might say, I've really enjoyed our conversation, but I must catch up with a colleague, or it was great talking to you. I hope we can continue this another time. A simple thank you for a delightful chat also works well. Remember, the goal is to leave the other person feeling respected and valued. With these strategies, you can navigate through any conversation with ease and poise. Let's recap what we've learned about mastering small talk. We kicked things off by understanding the significance of small talk in building relationships and creating positive impressions, be it in professional or social contexts. We then explored engaging topics for conversation, including the weather, current events, hobbies, travel, and food. We dove into the art of initiating and maintaining conversations using openers, open-ended questions, and sharing experiences. We emphasized the role of active listening and how nonverbal cues can show our engagement. We also tackled those awkward silences, learning strategies to overcome them by changing subjects smoothly or commenting on our surroundings. Transitioning between topics naturally and exiting conversations gracefully were next on our agenda. We learned polite phrases to end conversations while leaving the door open for future chats. We also touched upon cultural considerations in small talk etiquette. Through interactive role-playing scenarios, we put all these elements into practice. You are now equipped with the skills to engage in small talk effectively. Go out there and make meaningful connections. Let's learn new words and practice English at level B2. Icebreaker. Icebreaker, a remark or action intended to relieve tension or start a conversation. Example, using an icebreaker can help start a conversation with new colleagues. Body language. Body language, nonverbal communication through gestures, facial expressions, and postures. Example, good body language, like making eye contact and smiling, is important during small talk. Active listening. Active listening, paying full attention to the speaker and responding thoughtfully. Example, active listening shows that you are interested and engaged in the conversation. Common ground. Common ground, shared interests or opinions that help to establish a connection. Example, finding common ground, such as a mutual hobby, can make small talk more engaging. Transition. Transition, a change from one topic to another during a conversation. Example, smooth transitions between topics can keep the conversation flowing naturally. Follow-up question. Follow-up question, a question that shows interest and encourages further discussion. Example, asking follow-up questions demonstrates that you are paying attention and value the other person's input. Appropriate. Appropriate, suitable or proper in a particular situation. Example, it's important to choose appropriate topics for small talk in professional settings. Networking. Networking, interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social contacts. 
Example, small talk is a key skill for effective networking at conferences.